listening to the Brooklyn's Dad Talks About Everything podcast with your host, Michael Scotto, where we talk about theology in a conversational way, and we offend everybody. We believe in the Bible alone here, we believe in Christ alone here, and we don't compromise on that no matter what some early church father said. So sit back, take your shoes off, and put your thinking cap on. All right, we're back with my, my Magnolia tonight. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, some housekeeping things. I notice when I go back, when I have to go back, I have to listen and edit. Because if you watch the video version, if I mention scriptures, I throw in scriptures. And one of the nice about that for the video version is if I misquote scripture or a reference or something, I actually put the correct one up there and that sort of thing. That happens again loosely. I don't, if I'm preaching, I wouldn't do that. And obviously if I'm writing on the blog, I can correct everything, lay it out, do the Greek, the Hebrew, whatever I have to do, that kind of thing. So I don't do on this thing. The other thing I do is I sometimes say... I sometimes say the wrong thing. I listen back going, ah, I said the wrong word. You know, and people do this. I've heard speakers before, um, again, used in, in just talking, using the wrong word. I said, well, I know what they meant. I know what they meant. And I thought, sometimes I come back here and I correct it. And I thought, well, I'm not going to correct it every time. I mean, I heard a couple last time that I said, oh, that's the wrong word. Oh, that's not what I meant. Oh, I actually made the wrong reference there. Because... Remember, remember, we've done this a number of times, and this has been sort of the underlying theme. Of, one of the underlying themes of this podcast is to study to show you yourself approved unto God. And we, we put that quote up by Bollinger a number of times that in the end, all Bible study is, is, is uh, individual, intensely personal. I think that's one of the phrases he used. It's intensely personal. It's individual. Because each of us has to, and he says we have to, he goes, people can put it together, I'm paraphrasing Bulger, people can put it together, they can put it as different dishes, and, you know, they can even try to feed it to you, but you're the one that has to swallow it, right? At the end of the day, and, and again, I've had this really, um, over the years I've been moving in this direction, but I've really had this sort of epiphany in the last couple of years that... Really, people who hold to to my overall theological, generally theological, because we're all individuals and we all we all know that and we disagree on some things too amongst ourselves. But I can only put my finger on that I know about personally about two hundred fifty people on the whole planet uh, that I know about who who really hold maybe a little more now, let's say three hundred or so, that maybe hold to uh, my understanding and how rightly dividing scripture. Now, there's a lot more that hold to what I believe about you know, scriptures being inspired. Christ having completed the work on Calvary, the coming resurrection, a lot of those things that are core beliefs that we all that we do agree on. Still, among Christendom, it is those who believe by grace through faith that not of yourselves is a gift of God. That is a minority position. The vast majority of what calls itself Christendom is sacramentalist. It believes that um, and that it, the church, whichever church they want, is part of the salvation. Salvation is a process. You can lose that. You can you can do so many good works that you have an abundance of them. They go into the, you know the Catholic treasury of merit and those sorts of things. That's the vast majority of believers. Believers somehow uh, they're going to uh, pay for their sins one way or the other. Uh, there, there's going to be this this judgment of works, and of course the Catholic Church even teaches that not only Muslims who are first among the Abrahamic faiths uh, that salvation is also to the Muslim. They also believe in in books that have the imprimatur of an archbishop, uh, at least. That um, and John Paul II and amended this. You know, it's funny thing about John Paul II, parenthetically, is people talk about uh, the real Catholic ink, as I call them. They talk about what a great Pope John Paul II, a Saint John Paul II. He's been canonized, by the way, if you didn't know that. But the thing about John Paul II, I live by the airport, if you didn't realize. Um, the thing about John Paul II is they they make him out as be some sort of hardcore conservative Catholic. He was not, you know, he he was very ecumenical, um, even to the point where openly saying Muslims worship the same God the Catholic Church worships. It says, adore the Creator, along with us, adore the Creator. That's what the Catechism says, taken from Vatican II, um, which is infallible in Catholic Church. You have to believe that for Catholic. Uh, but also you've got this, the idea that animists, even atheists and agnostics, um, Hindus, etc., I mean, Pope John Paul famously with the Hindus, that they're all on a path to God. You know, it's a fuzzy TV set. And they're all saved by the Catholic Church eventually. They don't just don't know they are. Anyway, we're not getting into Catholic doctrine here. But 
<clears throat> this it all robs from Christ. It all robs from from what Christ did. So that was my parenthetical thought on that. Uh, but getting back to the individuality of faith and the small number. So what my, my epiphany is that, you know, since everybody's going to be judged as an individual and we're all individually responsible, I can't do anything about it. I can't do anything about you. You can't do anything about me. I'm not going to get upset. You can tell me whatever you believe. I mean, people tell me, I mean, again, I, and I find myself, it's my Italian blood and in my flesh, in my carnal nature, which I shouldn't walk in, that I do get upset. I, I get mostly upset when people don't understand or they're wrongly or if they're deceiving other people. So one of the things about being on a public forum is they, they might be deceiving other people and dragging them into their their error. You know, Sabbath keepers are big for that. You know, people get caught up in Sabbath keeping. They want to draw others in with them. That's one of the things. But last time, one of the things I said, and um, I'm probably going to break this down the blog because it's a big, big, big topic. Because I started to look at it. I was a couple hours in before I realized this is a monster topic. I couldn't, I, I really, this isn't, this is a format just to kind of talk about stuff. So I'm going to talk about it. Uh, but it's not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to break it down here as well as I probably could or should. Anyway, I'm talking about the churches, churches, plural, in the book of Acts and the churches, plural, in the epistles. Um, we talked about a little bit about First Peter and, and James writing to, to Jews. Obviously, they were apostles to the circumcision. Uh, do we have that today? You know, that means they were apostles to Jews. Right? That means God was still making a distinction <laughs> in the book of Acts. Anyway, we've covered that in many different ways. <clears throat> but Paul, among his epistles, we've noted the seven written during the book of Acts and the seven post-Acts and the differences between those. We talked about marriage, uh, ch childbearing, those within the expectation, the, the kingdom being at hand. Uh, and then Paul, how he talked to Gentiles and how he talked to Jews and how that all goes away. You know, the multiple baptisms and then the one baptism and all those things. But one of the things I kind of said in passing was the multiple churches versus the single church. Like you have in, uh, Paul talks about the church as uh, in 1 Thessalonians and um, I think in 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 2 as well, where he mentions multiple churches, the churches of God, the churches of Corinth, the churches and uh, and we talked about the body, and the mistake I made was of saying that the body, and I just said in passing, it's male body. It wasn't. It wasn't a male body. In the um, the body has its. I was saying that the body, as described, bodies, the local bodies, the churches, described in Paul's epistles during the Book of Acts, they have you know the eye. Can the eye say to the head? So it has its own. They each have their own head, right? They're different local bodies that have their own heads. And even Paul says, you know, in talking to Christians now, remember First First Corinthians five and six, all those wickedness is going on as believers. He's not talking unbelievers about um, not inheriting the kingdom and those sorts of things, not losing their free gift, but not inheriting the kingdom. And we talked about First Corinthians five and six, and I've written about it. it the context is believers, but the point they're making, you wouldn't take this. Is how we know it absolutely has to be believers. He said you wouldn't take um, the body of Christ and join it to a harlot. Well, an unbeliever can't do that. So, but believers can. Um, and again, there's, here's another great thing. That's a truth for today, too. It's still a truth. It doesn't go, I mean, the idea that um, walking in the flesh or walking in the new man goes away, it doesn't. That's, a, that's, that's true in every age. So dispensationalism, there's a hard line, and then there's a whole new set of everything. No, you, there are some truths that are just universal truths. There are some truths that are true in every dispensation, um, that sort of thing. But again, it, it's the different calling. So that's part of the earthly calling. We talk about that a lot. The earthly calling. They were looking for the kingdom. The kingdom was at hand. They were expecting the return of the king. That's what they, the Lord promised and, and the angels promised in, in, and the restoration of the kingdom. The Lord promised in Acts 1. The angels promised the Lord would return in the clouds as he left them, which is what the supposed called rapture is. It isn't. It's the return of the Lord to the earth uh, to set up his kingdom. The, the uh, son of David will sit on the throne. The, the, the Acts 3, we just did a whole thing on Acts 3 recently. Of Peter offering the kingdom to Israel and an Israel that still existed, right? Anyway, so the difference is those were multiple churches where, and they could be, and the, those churches um, were more a, a, like the synagogues. They're all part of greater plan for the earth, greater Israel, the, the prophecies and the covenants that are for Israel, and the promises it says in Romans 9. All these things, the covenants, the promises, these all are to Israel. Paul's brethren according to the flesh. Right? Okay, so I know I'm saying a lot here. <laughs> but the idea there in front of them is this return of the Lord, This, which is what he said, 
the, the setting up of the kingdom, the cleansing of Israel that they had to go through, we talk about all the time. And then coming out the other side is the bride. Now, we know in Hebrews that uh, Abraham looked for a, a city whose builder and maker is God, and that's the New Jerusalem, which is a heavenly city, it's a but it comes down to earth. It comes down to earth, and it comes down adorned as a bride. It's a very Jewish city. It has the names of the 12 tribes on it. It has the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb on it, who were the apostles to the circumcision. They were never sent to Gentiles, right? <laughs> Except for the one time with Peter, and we've covered that. Why? Uh, but it's a very Jewish city. It's what, it's what Abraham was looking for. It comes down to earth. It's part of the earthly plan, and it is the bride. It is for the overcoming Jew. Remember, the, the overcoming Israelite. This is, some, this is something that they attain unto. So you have this within Israel, this whole cleansing and then we see this in the Revelation, the cleansing, the overcomers, right? Those who are faithful, those who don't take the mark of the beast, right? Those who are part of the first resurrection of two, you know, and those that are uh, given great honor by the Lord. These are those that enter into the New Jerusalem, which then comes down to adorned as a bride. So Israel is this picture. This is the new covenant. Israel's picture does this virgin bride. Now, Jacob was referred to as either him or them, right? Because Israel is referred to as Jacob as well. So you have that male figure there. But when you see the restored Israel, the picture is as a bride. So Israel is the bride of Christ. Israel is O virgin Israel. Again, I was reading through Jeremiah 31. Again, I usually go to 31.31 because that's the actual new covenant where it states it. But the whole chapter is you cannot cram a Gentile Christian church into that chapter. It's just, it's just crazy. And when you read it, I mean, even just Jeremiah 31, 31 itself, starting with the, the statement of the new covenant, it's all for Israel. It's all for people who had an old covenant. And that's one thing I started to do. I started to, I was reading through that whole chapter and printing it off. And then uh, I was reading uh, other references to Israel's restoration, which is coming. You know, um, we've talked about, is we've talked about here, uh, Jeremiah 29. Uh, we've talked about here, Ezekiel 36. And part of what we did with Ezekiel 36, we went through part of the chapter. I went back and read that whole chapter again of Ezekiel 36. I'm reading this going, this is so clearly Israel that I don't know people who take verse 26 out of there and try to cram it upon themselves. I don't think I printed out the whole chapter. Uh, you know, but the verse that uh, 3626, it says, uh, well, not 3626, what is it? No, that's Ezekiel 33. So Ezekiel 33 I was reading, <laughs> Ezekiel uh, 36 I was reading, uh, yeah, here it is, 26, 36, 26. Also, I will give you a new heart, a new spirit I will put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, right? And people use that as a salvation badge. It's not, not, nothing of the sort. You, you can try to give that as a picture of salvation, but it's not, it's not the interpretation of it at all. I mean, it's a bad application in my book, but people can use it. Um, they shouldn't use it, I should say that. I'll go on record saying they shouldn't use it, <laughs> right? But I mean, when you read that whole chapter, and this is only part of the chapter, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, Ezekiel, saying, Son of man, when the house of, uh, when the house of Israel lived in their own land, they defiled it. Now, man, this is, this, cram, cram believers in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do this badly, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cram believers in here. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the church lived in their own land, they defiled it by their ways and their deeds. Their way, the church, before me as uncleanness of a woman in, was as an uncleanness of a woman in her impurity. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them uh, for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols which they had polluted with which they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the nations, the Gentiles, right? And they were dispersed throughout the countries according to their ways and according to the deeds. I judged them. When they entered the nations, the Gentiles, where they went, they profan. Now, why did they get there? Why were they there? Because the Lord sent them there, right? He's, he's cast them out of the land in there. When they entered the nations, there, where they went, they profaned my holy name because they said of them, these are the people of the Lord and have gone out of his land. Where are the people of the Lord? Oh, that's me in the church right there. That's the church. No, no, no. Right? These are the people of the Lord. But I had, now you might say, nobody does that, Michael. Oh, they do it. They do it because if you're going to cram them in here, you got to cram them in the whole thing. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel, which the church had profaned among the nations where they went. Makes no sense. Therefore, say to the church, it says house of Israel in the text. Thus says the Lord, I do not uh, do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, O church, uh, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations where you went. I will vindicate the sanctity of my great name, which profaned among the nations, which you, church, have profaned in their midst, right? Uh, then the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I 
shall be sanctified uh, before your eyes. Now, normally I put up all the scriptures I read on the screen. I don't know if I'm going to do that when I get to that because I'm going very fast. And but it's it's Ezekiel chapter sixteen, uh, chapter thirty six. Read along with me, starting in verse sixteen. But you really should read the whole chapter. The chapters around it too. And we're up to verse twenty four. I might put up singular verses just to kind of highlight things. But we'll see when I get to the editing stage. Right. Uh, for while I'll take you from among the nations, okay, I'll take you, church, from among the nations and gather you out of all the countries and bring you into your own land, whatever that, what land is God bringing the church into? Uh, then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols and I will cleanse you. This is the picture of the cleansing of Israel. This is the future picture of the cleansing of Israel. Now, right now, there is no Israel. We've talked about Israel in the land. We've done whole, several messages on Israel um, Christmas is for Israel is one of my favorites because Christmas is for Israel, by the way. Uh, and but but we do believe I do believe there is a plan. God has a plan for Israel, just not at the moment. It's not the plan that's on the table right now. Anyway, take you among the nations, gather you out of all country, and bring you own to land. Then I will sprinkle you clean. All right, verse twenty six. Also, I will. This is it. Also, I will give you a new heart. Who is the subject? Not the church. We tried to cram it in here. It doesn't work. The subject of, I will give you a new heart, a new spirit. I will put with you and you, and I'll take away your stony heart out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. That's Israel. That's future. That's for Israel. It's not for us. It's not for the believer. It's not for an individual believer. It's not the story of salvation. You can't preach a whole message around and get a new heart. You know, can't do it. Uh, I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. No, it's not what happened. Remember we know, we just talked about 1 Corinthians 5 and 1 Corinthians 6. The wickedness that believers can walk in, including, um, you know, the list there is is not only sexual sins of every kind you can imagine, but also uh, avarice and other things, greed, covetousness, all those wickedness things. And of course, the sin in, in 1 Corinthians 5 is not even named among the Gentiles. It's so bad. You know, now why would they say Gentiles? Because the, the called out company in the book of Acts is Israel, is a believing Israel, and uh, uh, but they're preaching to all of Israel, but a small remnant. And then God brought in Gentiles, grafted them into the blessings of Israel. Talked about that a million times. They weren't, wasn't, they were saved. There were no Gentiles saved until the Acts 10 or Pentecost. Not certainly not Pentecost. No, 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 no. We've seen believing Gentiles all through the old. That's what we see believing Gentiles. They lived among Israel, but they were grafted into the blessings of Israel for what? For the sake of making Israel jealous, but even the believing Jews were jealous because they didn't have to keep the law. They only had to keep the necessary things from Leviticus, Acts 15, Acts 21, right? Okay, I'll put my spirit within you, cause you to walk in my statutes and my judgments you and do them. Verse 28, you will dwell in the land that I gave your fathers and you will be my people and I will be your God. No, I can dwell in the land of the father. Fathers is Israel. Paul talks about your our fathers, Paul talks about. He's talking to Jews, talking about unbelieving Jews, talks about our fathers or believing Jews even, our fathers, Israel, Israel, our fathers, right? Not me, not me. My fathers were on fishing boats in the Bay of Naples, right? I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field. That's a spiritual fruit, you know, and so you will receive no more reproach or a famine among the nations. Uh, then you shall remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good <laughs> and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and your abominations, right? <laughs> That's what Israel's going to do. They got to go through that cleansing we talk about all the time. Not for your sake am I doing this, says the Lord. Let it be known to you, be ashamed and humiliated for your ways, O house of Israel. Not the church. Be, be ashamed, humiliated for your ways, O church. Again, I'm using church the way men use church because I know we've talked about church. Church has multiple meanings, right? We've talked about. We did. A, we did done several messages on the church. And we bring it up, uh, but church. Israel is the church in the wilderness. Right? So when you see the church, uh, in, even in the New Testament, as we call it, uh, it, it can refer to Israel. It, it is called the church uh, in the wilderness there as well. Uh, we also saw the, the craftsmen that come out and gather, and they're kind of all, they're not believers. They're upset by what's going on there. Uh, the mob, basically, I call them a mob. You know, it's a gathering of people. They're called a church. You know, and then, So it's, it's not a magic word, church. The church wasn't born on Pentecost. You know, doesn't work that way. Right. Um, so anyway, uh, thus says the Lord on the day I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will cause you to dwell in the cities and the waste places shall be built as spiritual waste places, as spiritual cities. The desolate land shall be tilled, <laughs> spiritual land. Right? 
Whereas they lay desolate in the sight of all who pass by, they shall say, this land, as we're going to say, your spiritual land was desolate, has become a garden of Eden. No, he said, this land that they see where it was desolate has become like the garden of Eden. Now, what do we know about the new Jerusalem in the future in, in Revelation, in the new heavens and new earth? It is the restoration, the river of life, which flows by the tree of life. This is the end. Remember, the, the tree of life was lost access to it in the beginning. Adam didn't go, I'm going to go build a temple now, and I'm going to build a temple and... No, Adam was looking for the restoration, but he didn't have the law. I want to go get circumcised and sacrifice a sheep over to the temple with the priest. He couldn't do that, right? And we have to put things in their context of the times and God's plan that's in sight, right? But Adam will have that restoration. We'll have the restoration, right? Then the nations with the Gentiles that are left all around you, that's Israel, left around you, uh, the land, uh, shall know that I am the Lord and built the ruined places and plant that which was desolate. That's not a spiritual application. I, the Lord, have spoken, I will do it. Because it's not even true for believers today. You know, spiritually, God's going to rebuild your life and then people are going to see the power of the Lord. No, that's not true. Right? I was watching a, a show tonight about J the Jason Jason Williams case. I forget I remember his name. The guy who played for the Nets. Played for the Sixers first who drafted him, I think. And played for the Nets. And, of course, he ended up uh, going to prison because he ended up shooting that guy in his house. Well, you know, he was, he, he had all kinds of problems. He was, he was, you know, around him, but he had a gigantic house, multi-cajillionaire, right? And that's the world today. Look at, I always say this, look at the, the top 1,000 richest people. Look at the list of billionaires or whatever. How many of them are, are believers? Not him, but believers, are, again, even in the United States, even in the West, believers struggle. I mean, certainly believers right in Bangladesh right now are struggling and believers in, in Africa are being slaughtered, right? They're not claiming the Psalms, and they're claiming what God's going to come get them and restore them to their land. They're not claiming any of that nonsense, right? That's what happens here. Thus says the Lord this, I will also let the house of Israel ask me to do for them. The church, I will increase uh, their men like a flock. Isn't that what's going to happen? Uh, as, the, uh, as the flock for sacrifices, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feast, so shall the waste cities be filled with the flocks of men. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Right? You can't do it. Now, again, I was printing off other things in here. Other, uh, Ezekiel 33, uh, Revelation chapter 12 I printed off. Um, and I'm not going to read all these because we're running out of time. Uh, but again, the, the point is for you to go do. When you, when you take a position, this is where I got to where I am very, very briefly, is that I came out of the Roman Catholic Church. Well, I thought I had it all figured out. Well, they had it figured out for me. They told me what I had it figured out. For me. That's what I studied. And I was teaching religious education at the time I started to study scripture. Right, and had that that whole period in my life with that turmoil of studying the scripture and trying to weigh all these things. Anyway, when I came out of that, when the Lord revealed to me my sin, my, my need for a Savior, His perfect and finished work, right? That's where I started. I was not an ultra dispensationalist, but I was a believer. So there are people who are, who are finding the Lord right now around the world. They're still my brothers in Christ, right? Whether they understand the mystery of, Revel, of, Evel, of Ephesians three or not, right? Whether they understand what I'm talking about here or not, but this might be you know, advanced for them or whatever, but it doesn't matter. I mean, and I'm not their judge. They might, they might get saved on their deathbed and die. They couldn't really learn a lot of scripture. That's not for me to judge. That's the, you know, that's the Lord uh, knows their heart and, and everything else like that. And I'll, again, they might be great in heaven and I'll be over here just happy to be here. Right? I have my own self to worry about. <laughs> so anyway, um, all <laughs> back to say, when I came out, I went in and I, uh, I didn't buy anything right off. I thought I needed a church because that's what I came up with. So I ended up at the Assemblies of God, and I've talked about that, why, how I ended up there, you know, and months after my conversion. I still went to the Catholic Church after I was converted, so I was a Catholic, saved Catholic, and saved, I'll use that term. I don't like that term, but we, for convenience. Uh, for a while, till I finally realized I need to get somewhere. So I ended up at Assemblies of God, and we've talked about that story before. Anyway, after that, I was examining Calvinism. I was examining you know, everything that had to do with cessationism versus continuation. Um, obviously, all the gifts, and even among Pentecostals and Charismatics, it was all those things going on. So I was I was navigating all these waters, but the thing that is, it was up to me though. It was up to me at the end of the day. I had to determine these things. And then uh, I heard a message by Bill King, and then John Phillips on dispensationalism. And but I had questions. The reason that Bill King and and initially, you know, John Phillips and and Bill McDonald answered some of those questions for me, and Gabe Aline, these others, J. Vernon McGee, is because I had questions that didn't make sense. I mean, I was born and bred on the book of Matthew, but the book of Matthew makes no sense. That's why I don't understand people now who, 
who are believers who try to cram themselves into the book of, of Matthew. And Matthew is another one. When, when the, Lord, the Lord talks about the church in there, take it to the church. What's he talking about? I mean, even the, even the most hardcore, you know, replacement theologian, you don't have a church in, in Matthew. You clearly have an Israel, you know. But Lord, son, somebody take it to the church. Yes, that's this is the assembly of God's people. You know, and we talked about how uh, James 2, uh, it talk, he uses the word synagogue. It's the only time synagogue in the Greek is translated assembly because the stupid people, not stupid people, because the people of the King James who are translating it, who were, were fallible men, and there's a lot of error that they made based on their church belief, the Church of England. So they can't have they can't have saying if a man comes into your synagogue, even though the word is synagogue, and we translate it as synagogue everywhere else. So they have to go to James 2 and say, if a man comes into your assembly, right? Even though it's written to the 12 tribes scattered abroad, the dispersion of Jews throughout the Roman Empire. That's who it's written to, you know, during the time when the kingdom was still at hand. And we talked about a little bit about James last time and the, and the laying out of hands. And the, oh, well, I've gone longer than I wanted to. And I printed out so much I'm not going to read. And, there's a whole, and I started to do a study, and I didn't even get to any of that. I just kind of referenced it here. Uh, you know, but the church is the firstborn. Uh, you know, this is all Israel. And then we have the church, which is his body, singular. All the singular things. One father, one hope, one faith, one baptism, one spirit. All those things in Ephesians. And then you have the body with its head is Christ. It's a one single body with the head Christ. And that's where Paul prays. We talked about this recently, that you would have the enlightenment unto the revelation of the mystery. Enlightenment unto the revelation given to Paul. Enlightenment unto the gospel of the free grace of God. Got the gospel of grace of God of for this age. Right? Salvation is always another verse of it. Okay, we're at 26, 27 minutes, so we're going to stop there. We went longer than we wanted to with my babbling. But anyway, again, it, it, it's up to you, man. It's, remember, theology of one. That's my thing. It's a theology of one. It's a theology of one. You have one theology you can answer for. It's yours. And God doesn't expect you to be perfect. I'm sure I, I, I don't know everything. And I'm sure there's things that I'm going to grow and learn. Read, I was reading some of the stuff I wrote just four years ago on my blog, and I go, eh, I kind of, mm, I would adjust that now. I, would, I don't quite exactly believe the same exact thing. And that's just a process, and the Lord knows that. And we all have limited intellects, right? But, but we're responsible for, as Americans, we have access to all these books and all these studies, and we have access to Greek and Hebrew, right? And whatever intellect I have, if God's given me a, a higher IQ for my parents, or whatever, or lower IQ, I'm responsible for whatever the Lord's given me, right? And again, that's all I can say. I can't, I don't know what your, I don't know what your access is. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're doing, etc. So anyway, now we're getting up to 27, 28 minutes and I won't shut up. So I'm going to shut up and say, bye, bye.